Hello, in this work, we investigate the sampling error in the estimation of observation error covariance matrices using observation minus background and observation minus analysis statistics. This work was carried out by me and Sarah Dance and is funded by the UK Engineering and Physical Science Research Council, their project, Data Assimilation for the Resilient City. The motivation of this work is that observation error covariance matrices affect the accuracy of analysis and forecast, particularly when assimilating remote sensing observations such as geostationary satellites and Doppler radar data. These data are known to have correlated observation errors. A widely adopted method to estimate correlated observation error statistics is the method proposed by De Rosier et al. 2005. In this study, we investigate the sampling error of this indirect sampling approach. This topic has not been widely investigated previously. I'll first introduce how to use uh, De Rosier diagnostic to estimate observation error covariance matrix. The first statistic we use is called uh, observation minus background or minus B statistic, which is the difference between observation and background in observation space. And if we take the statistical expectation of O minus B statistic, we will have this equation. And here we denote D as the innovation covariance matrix. And H is the linear rest operator of the nonlinear observation operator. The second statistic we use is called um, observation minus analysis O minus A statistics. Similarly, this is given by the difference between observation and analysis in observation space. We may find that this, uh, there's a relation between O minus B and O minus A statistics. If we assume the background and observation error statistics used in our data simulation are completely accurate. By taking the statistical expectation of the outer product of the O minus B and O minus A statistics, we will get the observation error covariance matrix. In practical applications, we may use a, a huge, a huge amount of data, a huge, a large size of sample to estimate uh, the expected value, and we get uh, some, we get sample covariance matrices. We use hot to denote denote sample covariance matrix matrices, and the symbol without hot uh, represent for the true matrices. And in the estimation of sample covariance matrices, here the over bar denotes the sample average. We followed the work by Ledoit and Wolf 2004. They defined the expected quadratic loss in this way. Here, F represents for Frobenius norm. And they show that this expected quadratic loss can be written into four terms. The first factor is into four factors. And the first factor is alpha, which is the ratio of the number of observations and the sample size. And the second factor is the mu squared, which and mu is given by the trace of D divided by the size of matrix. And the trace of D is the sum of, of the uh, diagonal elements of D. So that this means that the fact the mu uh, actually gives us uh, the average size of the diagonal elements of D. And uh, beta and beta, the two small quantities compared to mu squared and alpha. And and uh, Lidoid and Wolf show that these two factors are bounded as go as as sample size goes to infinity. In our work, we derive 
uh, an inequality for the for the expected quadratic loss of of sample observation error covariance matrix matrix. So that means the the error the sampling error of our hat depends on the expected quadratic loss of d hat and this term. This term denotes the square of the largest singular value of W, and W is the product of R and the inverse of the sum of H, B, H transpose plus R. We will also look at the sample eigenvalues. The sample eigenvalues refer to the eigenvalues of the sample covariance matrices. Lidart and Walp also showed that the expected quadratic loss of a heart can be written as this way. And here, delta rhi gives us the variance of the true eigenvalues. Note that here, mu r is the average of, of the true eigenvalues. And the delta describes the spread of the sample eigenvalues around the mean of the true eigenvalues. Our experiment is designed as follows. We created the matrix R using the first order auto regression correlation function, and we created the background error covariance matrix B using the second order auto regression correlation function. This matrix, this correlation matrix has been used in practical application to model uh, error covariance. We suppose our grid points are equally spaced on a circle and their distance are calculated by caudal distance. We assume, we, we suppose uh, our, observa our, our observations are taken alternatively at each grid point and are taken directly. This means we have a linear observation operator which contains only values of zero and, uh, and, uh, and, and one. We will investigate in our numerical experiments how sampling error changes with background and observation error uh, character, character, uh, characteristics. And the first plot shows the sampling error and the factors affect sampling error as a function of observation error st standard deviation. We find that all the factors uh, increase with, with sigma O observation error standard deviation. And as a result, we find the sampling error increase with, increases with sigma O. The second plot shows the, the change of the sampling error and the the affecting factors as a function of background error standard deviation. The result is different to the first plot in here because the, uh, the square of the largest singular value of W decreases as sigma B increases, which leads to that the sampling error will remain almost unchanged while sigma b increases. We then investigate how sampling error changes as observation background and observation error correlation and scales changes. We know that changes in LO and LB do not change the diagonal elements of the matrices. So it will not change the factor mu square. And we have shown in these two plots that uh, beta and theta are smaller quantities compared to SW and uh, mu squared. So that means in this case, the, the size of S square uh, the, the sum error is mainly affected by the size of S square. And we should also notice that 
the changes of sampling error as IO and ILB changes is quite small compared to the changes of uh, sampling error caused by the change of sigma O. There are a few points uh, we there are a few points describing what we have observed from our numerical results. The first one is sampling error is determined by factors alpha, mu square, and s square. And uh, the second is an increase in sigma O increases both factors mu square and s square. And an increase in sigma B increases mu square while decreases s square. Changes in LO and LB have no influence on mu square, but affect S square. We, we, we also pro, uh, perform some experiments on sample eigenvalues. In the left panel, the left panel shows the largest and the smallest uh, 35 sample and true eigenvalues. Here, the circle shows the largest uh, true eigenvalues, and the uh, plus shows the largest sample eigenvalues, and cross shows the smallest true eigenvalues, and triangle shows the smallest sample eigenvalues. We observe that the largest sample eigenvalues are greater, and uh, the smallest sample eigenvalues are smaller than the true values. The red panel shows the difference between delta and delta rife as a function of alpha. We found that if the uh, if observation error standard deviation is larger, the overall difference between true and sample eigenvalues reduces more slowly as alpha decreases. However, even we have a large sigma O, we can still get a good approximation of the true eigenvalues if we use enough sample. Our main conclusions for this work is that the sampling error is mainly affected by observation errors and deviation, slightly influenced by observation background error correlation and scales, and almost independent of the background error standard deviation. And also the, the numerical result we found here. Our results can provide guidance in deciding on appro appropriate sample sizes and choosing parameters for matrix reconditioning techniques. And uh, Please do contact me if you have any questions or comments I want to chat and discuss. We are really looking for some inputs and we will be glad if we can hear from you. Thank you.